My name is John W. Shoemaker, and this is my life. The way I put it is a silent beginning and beyond. My full name is John Woodrow Shoemaker. I was named for President Woodrow Wilson. I was born on 5917, Missoula, Montana. I started out in life with my deaf parents, and so I call it silent beginning. One time my mother and I was in the courthouse and it just said a son was born to the shoemakers. It didn't have any name. So I picked the name John and pushed Woodrow a middle name. My stepsister was nine years old when I was born. Her name was Helen Peary. Well, she was my sister. Uh, uh, she was nine years old when I was born. And uh, she'd been a very wonderful sister. She just helped me get along in life. And uh, I had a half brother. He was in the U.S. Navy in World War II, or World War I. And he his name was Elmer Shoemaker, and I had a brother, Henry Perry, and he was on a freight train coming home from down south where he worked. He'd send his money home, and he was coming with his cousin, and they jumped off of a train in Frenchtown and jumped in front of another one, and both were killed. And they had the coffins in my aunt's front room, and it was her, her boy, Fred Jameson, and Henry Perry, half-brother. I mean, he was about 17 years old. Uh, my brother, uh, Wallace, one, was, he was raised by family and his relatives in, er, er, in Missouri. And so I didn't know him until I was 40 years old. But we corresponded a little bit. But, and then they started coming through Missoula to go to Walla Walla to work at a cannon factory canning things, and they come every year, and I, I got acquainted with them that way. Dad worked in the sawmill, In the first sawmill before I was born, he had his hand cut off, so he had a special leather sleeve made on him, and he spent the rest of his life on the green jean. When I was a child, I lived between Fort Missoula and, and the uh, fairgrounds. And there's three houses there then. And they had the land between the houses and the streets. Quite a ways, they call them the flats. And the Indians pitched their tents there and dug bitter roots. When I was a kid, I always wanted to ride a horse. And my neighbor, he was an Indian and he had a workhorse, and I'd pull it up to the fence and curl on the fence up and get, in, get on it and ride it around. It was a workhorse, but it didn't, but it was a thrill. And one day he said to me, he said, John, he says, uh, would you like to, I, 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 have a, I have a garbage route downtown, would you like to go along? I said, sure. So I climbed up in the wagon with him and went along we went and he bought some chewing tobacco. And he says, you want some? Yeah, I took a big mouthful and swallowed it. And that's the Indian way of training you not to do it. Didn't like going to school, so I would go up on Mount, we call it Mount Mitten. It's next to Mount Sentinel. And uh, there was a farm up there and had sheep. And an Indian and his wife, they had a beautiful t big teepee and it was nice and clean. And I stayed there with them. And we heard the sheep down the hill to the what is now the university golf course. The German officers would catch me and bring me back to school, and then finally they called me incorrigible. When I got in the third grade, they, I learned to read. And boy, it was like going to a movie because I didn't have anything like that. And so I read books like Tom Swift and Horatio Alger and 
I was getting up to Zane Gray's and some of those, and the teacher says I was getting on beyond my class, but I loved to read. Oh, I had <clears throat> movie theaters. I had Tom Mix and uh, Hoot Gibson and all those are cowboys. Movies was 10 cents, and we uh, lived out by it. Where we lived was <clears throat> on the streetcar route. We rode streetcars to town. and. Uh, we went down to Putner every Saturday and it was 10 cents for kids and 20 cents for adults. I went to the Franklin and then the Lowell and then Missoula County High School, which is now Helgi. My dramatics teacher, she, I, I, I talked in the monotone for years and years because of my background. And uh, she taught me to throw my voice at the back wall and and she could make me feel like a million dollars or two cents just by her expression. My life as a teenager is in a home and very boring. You have no love in a, in a home. And they put me there because I was incorrigible, so what they called. And uh, in this home, I had kids that were from divorced parents or they were incorrigible too. And so there was eight to 10 in this home. And I lived there for nine years and I got awful discouraged because I just didn't have any love. Nobody cared for me. Being a, in a home where you didn't get to do any extracurricular activities. And so I didn't get to do much of anything except go to school. And that was boring too because you, uh, the extra activities you do is what makes high school interesting. When the kids ran away from home, they ran to their parents or something like that, and they got caught and brought back. So I figured when I ran away from home, I would <coughs> leave the country or leave the state. And so when the time came that I decided to leave, I went down to the railroad tracks and contacted a, a, a man, and uh, he advised me to go get a coat and then come back, but what he was trying to do was get me to go home. But anyway, I went back to the car, but the car was gone. So I went back out to the yards there and got talking to the fellows, and they told me which trains to take and how to get on the boxcar and this, that, and the other. And so I took off, and I had just a slight jacket on, and it was March, and it was cold. And I wrapped up in papers that was in the car, box car, and made out the first night. Oh, I wasn't a hobo until I left the home. At that time, it was during the Depression, and we were just a bunch of unemployed men looking for a job. And uh, I, I rode the freights from to uh, Seattle and uh, down to California and back. And the way you sat and stood in the door, doorway of a boxcar, I called it a side door Pullman, <clears throat> and enjoyed the fresh air and. Of course, when I got down to California, I got, it was pretty hot, and I was on a lumber car. That wasn't too good. It was too warm. And when I got off a train and was hungry or something, I, I would go to the uh, better neighborhoods, and I'd look at them, and then if they needed weeding or something like that, I'd go in and I'd offer to weed them. And uh, I would get something to eat or a quarter or so. And then one time I, I had been a painter when I was at the home, and uh, I come to this place and they were just painting it, and I says, uh, I could help you. And he gave me a brush, and I did such a good job, he gave me my first $5 bill. We didn't, we didn't consider hobos mean at all, because most of them were young guys and just out, of, just out looking for a job. <laughs> 